Kid, seriously. So it's our 100th episode, and I thought this was as good a time as any to sort of reintroduce the members of Kid Seriously to our audience and kind of bring the audience behind the scenes a little bit and understand the process as we go through here. And, and what I mean by that specifically is everything here has a very strong internal logic, how we do the show, why we discuss the things we discuss, why we don't discuss certain things. But to those who are outside of our collective brain trust, it can seem, I would imagine, pretty random why we talk about certain things and why other things are just left by the wayside. So, gentlemen, I thought tonight as a way to kind of let the audience know a little bit more about us and, and why we're into the things we're into, I wanted to talk about sports. And, and more specifically, which sports we like, which sports we don't like, and why we don't like them. That way, you know, you can understand why, say, for example, I never bring up hockey or Luke probably never brings up NASCAR. So I don't know. Does that sound like a, a reasonable topic for, for you gentlemen to expand on in the next few minutes? Sure. I, I sure hope so because that's what I prepared for. So no, and I, I appreciate how much faith you have in us in our work rate before you joined the show, but it's actually our 50th episode. Oh, it's our first year. First uh, year, 50th episode. First year, 50th episode. Okay, well. That's what happens, kids, when you don't write things down before you come to the pod. Okay, so, you know, I'm going to start, and I, and I think anybody who's listened to the show knows it's pretty obvious that I'm a big soccer fan, that my compatriots are as well. Um, soccer is really is my favorite sport, and I was thinking about why, and for a couple reasons. Um, one, because it's the one I played since I was six years six old. Year old. Um, I don't know how it was that I came to play. Um, my parents didn't care about soccer at all. We never watched it, never discussed it. The way they told the story, I just approached them one day and said I wanted to play. Uh, but it's the sport I've been at the longest, so it's the one that, as a player, I have the most understanding of what's going on. Um, another thing that I really enjoy about soccer, um, more so than any other sport I've watched, is it's 90 minutes and it's done. It's uninterrupted for the most part. Um, you know, a few South American games with diving players aside, it, it's constant action and it's a finite amount of time. And one of the reasons why this is important to me is it gets into my least favorite sport, which is baseball. Because baseball, I cannot invest four hours in a game it, that a game that has a grand total of probably three to four minutes of combined actual action. Um, it's just not mentally stimulating to me. It's too much time. It's too slow. Um, and so that's kind of where I started with. And, and I can go on about other sports and why I like them and don't like them, but I'd like this to be a little more of a free-flowing conversation. So I, I want to bring you both in at this point. Um, uh, you know, the conversation going, I like soccer because it's quick. Uh, because the action's constant, and I hate baseball because it's so goddamn slow. What about you guys? Well, I was first drawn to soccer in 2006, and I like soccer, but I think I like it less than both of you because I'm more of a football guy. Uh, but I do like soccer. Uh, I really was drawn to it because of that that Nike commercial when the United States players were in the locker room and it was shaking, and when your brother told me about the bags of piss that they used to throw at our players. And so that kind of made me think soccer was cool. And then I watched the World Cup and was just really appreciative of the passion with which people played and how when you score a goal in soccer, it's a big deal. I mean, it's it, it swings the game that could be the game. And so um, it's sort of life or death. Um, but I've kind of fallen out of favor with soccer because much of my – soccer identity was wrapped up in my favorite team, which was Real Madrid. And since the allegations of Cristiano Ronaldo, the rape allegations came out, a lot of my enjoyment from 2006 until now has come from one player. When he came to Real Madrid, it was, you know, one of my favorite 
sport, non-sporting sports moments of my life. I, I had actually gone to Spain and walked around the streets of Madrid and, and not knowing any Spanish would ask people, Donde esta Cristiano Ronaldo? A year before he came because I, I wanted him to join the team so bad. And so um, it's really kind of shaken my my interest in soccer. I haven't watched a full soccer game since that all, all came out. And so uh, my favorite is football. That's the sport I watched with my dad when he got custody of me when I was a kid. And it's it's always been my favorite, and it always will be my favorite. And college football I like a little bit better than the NFL, but um, the NFL has made a big comeback this year for me. And, um, yeah, a sport I don't like, I, I do like ba- baseball okay, but I like it maybe during the playoffs. Um, I like the Cubs. I don't necessarily like baseball. So for, for me, I guess the sport, you know, I, I like soccer for a lot of the same reasons Mark does we played it since we were little kids and it's the sport I know about and I think part of my identity when I was a kid was I was the kid who played soccer because we didn't have a lot of kids that played soccer in my grade there were probably about four or five of us that were actually really serious about it and some who just kind of came out and played on the team because they would let you be on the team if you tried out type thing in high school and then there are a few of us who are really into it so I think I've always latched on to that I mean and then I worked at an indoor soccer center in high school which is how I became an Arsenal fan because we would get videotapes sent to us from England of about three games per week so you were you were either watching Arsenal, Manchester United, Liverpool, or Newcastle at that time because those were the the big teams, and I liked the Dutch players at the 98 World Cup, and Bergkamp and Overmars were on Arsenal, so I fell into Arsenal that way. And I think a lot of my just liking of sports in general has to do with the amount of knowledge I have about that sport. So that's why soccer's at the top, and the same with hockey. Our parents liked hockey a lot. Our dad played hockey and helped coach me a little bit in hockey for for the tiny amount that I played. And we would always watch gopher hockey. Mark wouldn't watch it with us, but the rest of us would watch gopher hockey. And then I turned that into a love of the NHL, which my parents weren't necessarily into, especially when the North Stars left. And part of that might be video game related because I was in middle school and we got NHL 95, which was the best hockey game ever. It was the first where you could make trades and create your own players. That's why I was a big Red Wings fan is because that was the team I could win with. And Steve Eiserman scored all my goals and that was how I learned who was in the league. And I knew more about the Red Wings because that's who I played with. So I knew who all their players were. So I think a lot of it just has to do with knowledge. I think of the main sport that I don't really watch a lot of, which is basketball. And our parents did not play basketball. They did not watch basketball. They didn't talk about basketball. Our dad in particular, no one in our family is tall. Our dad is maybe 5'3", five, 5'4", five, and was very, very insecure. And he actually talked about how basketball was a discriminatory sport because short people weren't allowed to play it. He was really bitter about it. So I don't know much about basketball, and I never did. One of the things I've realized just in this last year is that my son loves basketball, and he plays basketball. He plays two games a week. So I've been learning the rules through that, and I've been watching the Bucks with him because he loves watching the Bucks, and I've been learning the rules. And now that I understand what's happening... I end up liking it a lot, where if you would have asked me that in high school, I would have had zero interest in talking, watching, or thinking about basketball. It just was a bunch of repetitive rundown score. Points don't matter because you're going to score 100 points in a game, so who cares about this bucket? And the last two minutes takes 20 minutes because of all the fouls, etc., etc. But once I started gaining the knowledge of why they're doing these fouls and how that plays into the strategy and fouling out and all these other things... I have become more invested in it. And what I've kind of realized is that there's sports I now avoid because I just don't have room on my plates anymore. Like rugby's one. Like if I actually sat down and figured out the rules of rugby and found a team, I bet I would love it. And I just don't have the time to invest in loving rugby. So I I think for me, that's it. And I think there's a lot of sports too. Like the Winter Olympics come around and there's four-year sports. Like I could watch every single speed skating event at the Olympics and just not get enough of it. But if speed skating was on NBC tomorrow at nine o'clock at night and I had nothing to do, there's no way I'd watch it. I don't know. There's just something special about it being once every four years. But for me, love of sports has really come down to my knowledge of the game. Uh, The more knowledge I have, the more invested I am in it. And I kind of flow that way. Now it's just finding the time. 
Okay, so you touched on something that I, I actually wanted to ask you about because I knew you would bring up hockey. And um, what a lot of our um, listeners probably don't realize is that I am the only known born and raised Minnesotan who does not care about hockey. Uh, I'm, I am a unicorn in, in that sense. And, and for me, the reason why I don't really care about hockey is because for me to get into the sport, I have to be able to watch it on, I have to play it or I have to be able to watch it on TV. And I was into soccer because I played soccer. Uh, hockey, I would watch it on TV, but I absolutely cannot track the puck. When I'm watching it, I have no idea where that thing is. And I, I, I never understood if this was just a, a deficit on my part, if my eyes aren't tracking properly, or if there's something that I'm missing. I mean, when Fox said they were going to put that glowing blue thing over the puck, I thought that was a tremendous idea. I, I thought if it worked, it would have been great. So, so, so my question for you, Luca, as some and in my two, because I uh, assuming you like hockey, um, is, is what am I doing wrong? Am I is, is it is it a fluke that I can't see the puck while while it's playing, or am I just not looking? Should I not be watching it? What what, what do you think? What's going on? You Hope should you should not be watching the puck. You should not be trying to find the puck. You should be looking at the players on the ice and what they're doing with their bodies. And once you get really a period in, if you're just starting out, you can tell where the puck is based on what they're doing and how they're moving. Um, I also think that gives you a broader perspective of what's going on in the game if you're looking at the players as a whole rather than just trying to focus on the puck. Because even if you can puck pick the puck out really well, it, you're not really following the entirety of the play if you're not seeing what the wingers are doing while the center's bringing it down or you're not seeing what the defensemen are doing. It's just kind of a blur of action if all you do is concentrate on the puck. So it's it's trying to look at the players and see what the players are doing and then the rest of it, for me at least, comes together. Um, I don't know if that makes sense now that I just said it out loud, but that's how... I watch the game is by looking where players are and what players are doing. And generally the, the puck kind of just follows with that. Maya, what do you see when you watch? Cause you, you like it. I say too, is I, I focus on the movements of the players and, and, and that's, yeah, I think that's the only way to do it because the puck takes such weird caroms and, and weird bounces off of things that it's impossible to follow. If you do, you, you're going to get lost pretty quickly. Um, I would liken it to when you're at a live baseball game and you see a ball hit to the outfield and you don't really know the depth. Uh, everybody watches the ball and they think it's going to be a homer and it's like 20 feet in front of the fence. Like, well, just watch the outfielder. Yeah. Just watch the outfielder. He'll, he'll tell you what's going to happen. Okay. No, and I mean, I, I guess, and I understand that to a certain extent because, I mean, when you're watching soccer, that's what you do. You're not just watching the – the ball you're watching the the off movement of, of the wingers and you know the defense and, and everything it's just i you know with soccer too at any point in time you can just check back in to where's the ball oh okay there it is whereas with for me with hockey i just i i never could make that leap of never being able to check in and find where the puck was and especially too because i don't have that problem when i watch it live when i watch it live i can see it pretty easy and again i don't know if that's normal and I'm just a bad viewer or, or whatnot. But that's why, that's why for, you know, anybody out there who, who's curious, I am the only Minnesota who's not into hockey. Um, uh, but it sounds like, I mean, do you all agree with me, at least on baseball being really long and boring? Uh, I, I don't dislike it to the level you do. I more identify with what, Maya said, I end up being a really big baseball fan in April and September, generally, because I'm really excited for it to start, and I do watch games, and I'll watch weird random games that are on ESPN in April, and then I'll I'll check out, because it's just too long a season to check in on every single game, and then I get excited at the playoffs, and I'm coming off an exciting year for me, because I like the Brewers, and they were very good last year, and made a, a deep run. Um, I think there's something also just romantic about baseball in America. It has more history than any other game that we have here, which I think makes it more fun and exciting too. You know, I mean, you're talking about some of these teams like the Reds were in what the 1800s they were founded, you know, so there's so much more to it that way. And it's also just something for us. Like our mom loves baseball 
And she could talk about it endlessly, and she has since she was a little kid. So I think it's one of those things, too, almost like watching Westerns, which she also loves, where it's kind of like a bonding thing to watch and talk about baseball with her, because uh, she gets so excited for it. Like, I've never met a grown woman who, like, gets so excited if you have a pitcher make seven pickoff attempts in one play. Like, she thinks that's amazing, because she's sitting there going, now watch where the batter goes now. How big is his leadoff going to be after that pickoff attempt? Oh, look at that guy's move, blah, 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 blah. Like, she gets into those little details, which I think makes it more exciting. So I think I have a little bit more of attachment to it than you do, but I'm not someone who's going to turn on any game. I'm not only a bad Minnesotan, I'm a bad son, is what you're saying. Oh, you're a terrible son. Okay. I think we've I gave her grandkids. You were never going to win. Yeah, that is true. So, all right. Well, um, I don't know if anybody else has anything to, to say. I just thought that that might be an interesting little uh, a side note for uh, our dozens and dozens of listeners to know why it is that uh, we'll occasionally have topics like the MLS draft and um, you know NFL games come up in the, the questions, but you never hear anything about basketball or NASCAR or tennis uh, whenever we're talking about it. So, Oh, hopefully they found it at least vaguely interesting as much as I did. So there, there has to be someone out there wondering how we can do basically a sports segment every week, and it's ninety percent of the time about major league soccer. <laughs> and Baker Mayfield, until we get told that we need to be more respectful to Jets quarterbacks or whatever that shit was. <laughs> by, the, by the way, of course it's Jets. Fans. <laughs> like you texted me that we got some negative press. And I was like, ooh, I'm real interested to see what sort of opinions these people have about football. And, of course, it's Jets fan sticking up from Sam. God, did, did you guys see Adam Gase? Did you see that crazy eyes? crazy like, eyes? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Like, that that guy, whoever wrote that little that little note for me about about his, his football beliefs, I can't wait. Now he's got Adam Gase and Sam Darnold. It's going to be a great year for that kid. No, and as uh, an official spokesman for Kids Seriously, we just want to tell everyone that the Jets are the best franchise in the history of sports. They do everything perfectly correct, and the record reflects that and how good they've been these last, what, 30 years? So, yeah, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Maya, take us out of here. They fucking suck. The only thing interesting about your team is watching your aging has-been quarterback striking out when he drunkenly hits on uh, sideline reporters in the middle of big games. Your your franchise is kind of terrible. Best jerseys, though. Crap all over your outro, by the way. Best best jerseys. I was going to say, before I was so rudely interrupted, because we're in three different spots and no one can see me and know that it's my goddamn turn to talk. Mark, you were wrong about one thing. You said that you weren't ever going to win, and you did win tonight because your mom is most proud of you. Because you are the Kid Seriously champion. So we're going to end with you first. Where can they find you, champion? <clears throat> well, you can uh, either find me strolling the halls of Powell's Books here in Portland, or you can find me on Twitter at Wink Martindale 5 Luke! Luke underscore Neitzel. N-E-T-I-Z-E-L. Something like that. I don't know. You'll figure it out. Happy birthday, boom! For me, I'm Maya Madrid. And I have no tagline this week. We'll just see you guys next week. Together we're at Kids Seriously. Let's go. Bye. See ya. Thanks for listening to Kids Seriously. If you didn't completely hate us, feel free to hit like, subscribe, or tell a friend about the show. If you want to write to us and tell us how much we suck, or just ask a question, you can reach us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, hit us up on Twitter, at KidSeriously. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.